three, and two, and one. Sunday, December 15th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, of German Length, episode number 535. And we have with us, uh, well, Damon's on assignment. I don't know what he's doing because it wasn't written for me. But we do have Edward Angelini Cook back. Yeah. Second month in a row. Just a scat three weeks ago, you were with us, darling, and now you're back again. Yay! <laughs> and 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 he was so good that he killed my monitor. So yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I don't think that was intentional back then. No, it wasn't intentional, I suppose. But uh, that everything's all fine and dandy, so that's that's all that really matters. Um, anyways, so Gary, yes. we're talking about one of my favorite things, aren't we? Uh, well, yeah, one of your other favorite things. So <laughs> I want to give all of our listeners and our viewers a quick update. Uh, we had planned last week to have Daddy, Daddy Hadrian on. And then um, a event came up to came up that he was invited to about a dear friend of his that he went to uh, in the fair city of San Diego. So that's why he wasn't able to make it last week. And then uh, unfortunately, he's in New York City this weekend, I believe, for work, and so couldn't make it. So we switched around plans and uh, came up with a quick topic. And then I reached out to the dear, dear, dear PhD pursuant Edward to be a guest because I thought he might have something to say about this. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I knew that at least Jeff would have things to say or be pleased and pay attention to the topic, something of that sort. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and why it took us till episode 535 to talk about it, I don't know. Um, but so uh, I mean, we're still going to have it before. Yeah, well, it has. But now we're going to talk about it in depth. And I'm pretty sure our missing co-host, uh, Damon, uh, will probably be dismayed to find out that we discussed it without him. But... Oh, well. Uh, Considering. Yeah. So, um, the Santa fantasy. We have several times on Comes Out Loud podcast talked about um, Jeff's preference um, for the big jolly man with the big uh, belly and the beard and the the sack full of things and all that. But um, I wanted to know, like... Where does this come from? Where do we think it comes from? Uh, and Ed, I have some feelings based on some of the stuff that I saw that you put in that you linked that there's some background possibly. Yeah, I mean, um, so so some like background on that. So like when Gary texted me and asked, I was just getting off of an airplane and like on the way back from the airplane, I was like making all these connections in my head, like – you know, the first thing I came up with was, like, the idea of, like, naughty and nice and, like, like sitting on Santa's lap. So I did some research and, like, yeah, this is, like, a big thing, right? So, uh, like, there was this uh, research done with Pornhub, of all places. We love Pornhub. Well, of course. Uh, that like around Christmas time, there is a 400 and I think like 32% increase in uh, searches for Santa related porn. Um, And that goes across sexes. Um, And like the, the like reasoning behind this is like the, the fact that like there is a potential uh, like link with like the, the famous aspect, like the fantasy aspect um and then like the other big thing is like the power differential you know that here is this like person who knows everything that you have done in the past year and like has the power 
power to to either like give you presents or take them away and give you coal. Like that just goes right up there with some like BDSM stuff, right? And then um some other interesting things that I found out is like far as like fetishes, like you know, that there are documented fetishes with like uh like body hair and uh like extra weight um and the one thing that is interesting but makes a lot of sense is the color red is linked to sexual um attraction um which you know is making that like makes sense to me so like you know like all the songs like lady in red you know and like you know red you know fuck me pumps <laughs> Red light you know, district. Like red like is always popping up as like a um as a color of desire. So it sounds to me like we are meant to be programmed to find Santa like as a sexual being. I mean, but like like think about it though. Like a lot of like the stuff that or a lot of the things that are Santa related are very like Cody, right? Like sit on my lap. You know, like Santa's coming to town you know like c-o-m-i-n-g and like c-u-m-m-i-n-g like we can double <laughs> entendre um like like the santa lore like coming down our chimney like uh you know having bringing him leaving him milk and cookies like yeah uh, yeah lots of love that milk um <laughs> but the one thing um, to go back to the color of red thing, like evolutionary wise, red is seen as a color of um, sexual readiness and sexual preparedness. Oh. Mm hmm. And I just found out that Santa Claus the movie is currently only four bucks on uh, Apple. Is that good? Yes, because it's it, well, it's actually cheaper than any other place, which is very strange. By the way, if anybody wants to know what my current my favorite Santa is, it is uh, David Huddleston as uh, Santa Claus in Santa Claus the movie. Interesting. From nineteen eighty six, eighty four, I think. Oh. Uh, not bad for a guess though Ed. 85 like, 85 oh so in between both of you hmm. yeah it also includes dudley moore and john liskow are both in the movie too i remember that movie i love that movie so much even before i realized that part of it was the fact that i was i had the hots for santa claus <laughs> Well, I hope with what I just said that, like, that kind of now makes a little more sense now. I thought uh, it was just he was big, fat, and hairy. I mean, yeah, but, like, what about all, like, the, like, you have somebody who knows all of the good things and all the bad things that you did in, in the year. See, this just, just adds to it, so. Exactly. Santa needs to get me a spanking Mm-hmm. Anyway, moving on. Well, so here's something that came up recently. Let me see if I can do this real quick. And then uh, copy image. I'm going to see if I can add it to the doc. Um, I'll put it above the one that... Uh, there we go. So uh, we kind of briefly, I think, mentioned this last year. Um, Kurt Russell played Santa Claus. He's returning as Santa Claus. Goldie Hawn apparently is going to be with him. Um, I must say, Kurt Russell looks daddy as fuck as Santa Claus. Snaps. Like, like this like grayish white curly beard, this nice long locked kind of like, you know, and this particular one, he's got these like nice scott like gloves on that are black and a red leather trench coat that appears to be rabbit fur lined. I don't know. I'm imagining it's probably fake fur, but it looks really good. That's not problematic at all. Um, you know, and the belt and the whole bit. But I'm just kind of like, all right, I, I can get down with that. Um, so maybe that's like the modern version of, you know, little 
little young ones um, having awakenings between their legs that, uh, you know, regarding Santa Claus and what it comes about from that. Um, I don't, you know, Ed, you really got me spinning and thinking about this whole, like, right as desire. And there's this whole um, Dom aspect in, like, the omnipotence, uh, you know, of knowing your behaviors. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And the judgment factor that comes with that, the rewards or the disciplines. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that like was intentionally set through the years, through the, you know, the millennia and whatever, where all of these stories have coalesced to this current point. Um, you know, I mean, some of that I think was there on purpose to keep children in line in terms of their behavior. Like, Mm -hmm. Um, I just came from the laundromat and there was a little boy that was there and there was an older woman who I think was his mother and was talking about how he needs to behave and pay attention. He needs to do it all the time because Santa's always watching. You know, it's not just when you feel like you're, you know, want a good present that you're doing good things, which I thought was kind of comical. Um, and I had a briefest moment where I almost wanted to say something like, you know, you know, I once misbehaved and Santa didn't give me what I wanted. And then I was like, no, don't even like, don't even spread that lie for the child. Like, this is just... <laughs> more dramatic than it needs to be (laughs) in that case but yeah i mean i think there's really some wild kind of stuff and um you put in a link that uh we'll have about the porn hub insights um where uh they have a title it says have yourself a merry little xmas like as in triple xmas and you know bless porn hub for this is about three years ago (laughs) breaking down all these statistics. Um, so yeah, like it's kind of crazy as to how much the percentages jump in this time of year, like as to what's related. Um, I mean, Santa happens to be the biggest one uh, in terms of like popularity. Although I am surprised by a uh, Christmas orgy. That wasn't what I necessarily would have thought of uh, in that um, Christmas gangbang. <laughs> kind of like hmm, okay some of the other ones kind of like make sense like sexy santa nanny you know naughty santa santa's horny helper um bad santa even ticket a box um so yeah then they break down like men versus women who's horny for the holidays 34 uh, men are 34 percent more likely to search for christmas related terms than women so but in a way that kind of doesn't surprise me because men are more uh visually stimulated i think um, at least that's like kind of the way I see it. Uh, so that it doesn't surprise me that they would be specific as to what they're looking for. Although I just realized that women are the ones that are searching for Christmas gangbang. Wow. <laughs> that's true. Okay. Well, I, and, s- I and suppose men are looking it's... for Christmas anal, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, is that? I'm... Is that more of like that's more of the gays or is I don't know what's a, what's the sexuality? Uh, I I want this broken down a little bit further. <laughs> True. No, I agree. Like you you have an excellent point. Like it's just broken down by gender and it's not explaining like where orientation is falling uh, mm-hmm. within these. <laughs> Although when you go to the next graphic, which cracks me up to know end, Mrs. Claus searches are a whopping uh, 100 and what, 52% higher (laughs) than actual Santa searches. So Mrs. Claus is more popular, just for the record. Um, Yeah, and then there's an interesting thing about Christmas traffic, that it dramatically drops um, towards the end of Christmas Eve day, and, uh, and then it comes back up on Christmas Day. Imagine that. So, yeah, there's a uh, it's some really interesting stuff. I don't even like did you know about this before? And when you put the you gave us the link or was it just something that you found? Well, um, I think so. I know that like Pornhub has all of these statistics, um, which is one of the reasons why when this came up, I was like, of course, Pornhub. <laughs> of course, this is a thing. Right. Um, and yeah, so I think it's really interesting how um Pornhub is really changing the way that we like look at like sexual viewership 
um, by putting all of these uh, parameters around it. Um, so yeah, like I think that if um, I don't know where it is, but like there are links to like other aggregated um, Pornhub searches, which are really interesting. Um, yeah. So how about this? This is a complete sidebar because I'm actually reading uh, articles that were released by Pornhub regarding their stats. Uh, back in October, video games are a popular search for genre on Pornhub, including Fortnite, which is searched for more than a million times each month. Perhaps it's no surprise that when Fortnite's game player servers went down on Sunday, October 13th, that players went to find their fix on Pornhub instead, searching for <laughs> things like Fortnite, where 152% above regular. Wow. I know. Like, I'm just kind of like, this is really statistically intriguing. Like, I mean, I'm actually quite happy that they put some of this stuff out there. They talk about elections and politics, like how yep. that affects how things come out. Alien porn search. Oh, New York City gay pride. There's a whole thing about that. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, uh, the the Pornhub.com slash insights slash category slash stats uh, can give uh, some brilliant insights. So who knows? They might be posting another article this year after the uh, Christmas holiday about it. Oh, no. There's May the 4th beat with you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> insights in 2018 searches on that particular day grew by 748 percent above average mm. yeah nice cock hero oh no i'm just what have you, you done Ed? Him... <laughs> exactly denmark yeah. saint patrick's day facebook and instagram outage boy they are just like on top of this, oh, big beautiful women. I got an article mm -hmm. on that. Brazil's golden showers. I'm just. <laughs> wow. Okay. Can you search this archive? Super you Bowl. How the Grinch stole searches? That's not it's an attention one. grabbing uh, link. It's from December 20th of uh, last year. And so now I'm highly intrigued. By the way, masturbation month in the month of May. Yeah. No surprise. Oh, yeah. Back Huge. in March, they did a feeder fetish one. So last year's article was about how the Grinch stole searches was um, searches containing Grinch versus Santa. Holy shit. What? So the graphic shows that last year, from about mid-November till about December 8th, the Grinch-related searches... With things like The Grinch, The Grinch, Triple X Parody, Grinch, El Grinch, Grinch Till Christmas, Grinch Parody, and Grinch Porn were 3,313% to 3,452% above average. And then once we hit December 8th, it swings wildly, and then it all switches to, like, Santa searching, like, as the dominant of the two. That's very interesting. I had to find yeah. that article. Copy link. You got it? Yeah. Okay. The most popular Santa-related searches are Santa, Santa Claus, Santa Girl, Bad Santa, Santa Fucks Elf, Santa Daddy, Black Santa, and Santa Claus with an E. So have either of you seen the photo that's been floating around about the, like, Dom Daddy um, Santa? Um, and, like, he's, like, kind of, like, positioned over this, like, elf. And it's mm. super hot. No, no, it's a silver daddy. He's got um, like his beard is closely trimmed. Um, he's not wearing a shirt. He's muscled as fuck. Um, and I think he's wearing like uh, like red underwear, but I can't find it. <laughs> Shit. Santa. Oh, well, there. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know. This is on Amazon. Amazon, what are you doing? Amazon.com, Santa is a Dom. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a paperback. Santa is a Dom question mark by J.D. Grayson. 
Is it crazy for a 27-year-old woman to give a naughty Christmas list to a mall Santa? Is it even crazier for that girl to believe Santa claims of being the magical man? I'm Charity Lane. Welcome to the world of the temporary insanity. In my defense, I was just dumped by my husband a week before Christmas. Though, what if Santa really does exist? What if he really, if he'll deliver my every desire and more with nothing left to lose? I put my faith in a stranger. Maybe he'll be the one to deliver the happy ending I deserve. Okay. This is like a romance novel, apparently. You know, I'm like, so something else just kind of popped into my head while you were talking about that, Gary. So like the idea of like the, the Christmas list Mm -hmm. and like, here you are writing a list of things that you want from Santa. Okay. So like, that makes me think of like when you're like negotiating, say a scene or something. And you're like, these are all the things that I want. And based on your behavior, You'll get them or you won't get them. Mm. <laughs> I like that. That mm. Well, no, like you're you're really not off the mark. Like that's what I, I'm just I'm really surprised by the amount of uh, accuracy like in in what you're describing. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like. I, I, I'm kind of uh, caught on, off guard and unawares about that. Um, well, I, w- I will say that, like, as part of my profession, I am, like, I provide some, like, really spot-on analogies to help people understand stuff. So, um, so yeah, this kind of comes to me very easily. But, um, but, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it with the Christmas list... That is very interesting. And now that has my gear spinning. <laughs> I mean, but you also have to consider the, the yield song Santa Baby. Yes. All right, well, Jack, sing us a few bars. <laughs> Actually, I don't think we can because of like. Right. Santa oh, right. Baby, slip a sable under the tree for me. Do people really know what a sable is anymore? I mean, like sometimes these Christmas songs, just to to derail this, like they think about they sing about things like you know a hippopotamus for Christmas. Like, I, I think there's a context in the pop culture time frame that would make sense, but then there's also like, is it relevant to the now? I mean, seriously. Uh, Been off the good my boys, favorite. Santa baby, hurry <laughs> down the chimney tonight. See. That's so naughty, and I this, love this it. This has got to be uh, the, the song "Santa Baby" must be in public domain, considering the next line is "Santa Baby, a '54 convertible to light blue." I'll wait up for the next my fifty years. Santa babies, hurry down the chimney tonight. I'm sorry. What? Um, what? How long is the? Public- 50 years, right? Um, I don't know. Think, Copyright is like all fucked up because it is all right. I think it, it, I think it transitions and changes. Uh, you know what? Google is your friend. Is Google, Santa yeah. Baby public domain? Santa <laughs> Baby not part of the public domain no it's not i didn't think so they're they're a secure mechanical license with our partner easy song licensing not licensing however pretty much oh the 12 days of christmas we wish you a merry christmas uh up on the house top i'm trying to find something that is not a hymn <laughs> yeah good luck with that God rest ye merry gentlemen. Meh. Go tell it on the mountain, maybe? I don't know. The Hallelujah Jolly Chorus? Oh, I love jolly old St. Nicholas. But anyways, because we're not actually playing the song of anybody, I, I think we're, we're furries. Uh-huh. We're not singing the whole thing. Anyways. Sure. Oh, Carol of the Bells. Lyrics are public. Uh, it's weird. Because it says 
lyrics only music public domain. Okay, so the lyrics to Carols of the Bells are not public domain, but the music for Carol of the Bells is public domain. That's so weird. Oh. That's interesting. All right, so I think I found an image that's really for Jeff. Heads up, this might be sensitive content. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> is it on Tumblr? Uh, no, it's on Pinterest. View image. Yes. Copy. I'll paste it to the doc. If I could never get back to it. There's too many damn tabs open. <laughs> <laughs> so how about a big-bellied uh, Santa with his jacket open wearing a harness underneath? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down for that. I'm kind of surprised that some of these are on Tumblr, though. Or not on Tumblr. On um, Pinterest, though. Well, then again, maybe not. Like, I kind of wondered if Pinterest was going to take the place of, of uh, Tumblr, but not necessarily. So... Do any of us know this gentleman? Give me a second. Oh, oh, Tumblr tagged Santa. Oh boy, Santa Bear. That'll just like that'll drop you down a rabbit hole that'll never stop. Apparently, too late. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we'll share. I, I uh, hang on. I am like, <laughs> give me back to the doc, and then I can post it in there. Our poor listeners. So, oh. yeah, right. So, big bearded, like it's all dark beard, but he's wearing a Santa cap. He's got his tongue sticking out. He's wearing like leather bracers or uh, overalls. Uh, 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 or, shit. Uh, 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 suspenders. Thank you. Um, but he's also got black leather gloves on, and they're kind of pointed. Like It kind of looks like he's pointing his index fingers at you. But at the same time, it makes me think that he's about to give you titty twisters. I'm just saying. Like, he's mm-hmm. just going to clamp onto your nipples and, uh, you know, grab hold. Show you how naughty you've been. Apparently. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Or nice, you know. They're they're demanding these links uh, in the chat. <laughs> I'll try to get all these in the show notes. Um, wow, Patience. I don't know who, who I don't know who this guy is, but he's a uh, he qualifies. I don't know if he's single or not. Um, hang on, let me. There, there's a link. I don't know if that's gonna work. There we go. He's a really good looking guy. Um, and comes up under Santa Bear. Let me see if I can find this. Mm. I mean, that's a very sweet looking Santa Bear. Now, we really haven't talked about uh, the Santa from Rise of the Guardians. Oh, yeah. Is that what that um, that clip is, or the that graphic? So, so there was a tweet from uh, Wendy Snow Radish, uh, who says everybody talks about how Rise of the Guardians t- turned Jack Frost into a twink, but I've never seen anyone talk about their version of Santa, who looks like he runs an underground BDS um, leather club. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen this movie. You've never seen Rise of the Guardians? It's so good. No. But I feel like after seeing this, I need to. But the Santa in there is this big, burly, muscly guy. So he doesn't actually have much of a belly. But it, when he rolls up his sleeves, he's got tattoos on each of his arms. One says naughty and one says nice. So there's a picture of him. And if you search out, uh, for Rise of the Guardian Santa Claus, I'm sure you'll be able to find find it where he's got his arms crossed and it says, and you can see naughty and nice uh, right there so but yeah you you gotta see the big tatted Russian Santa daddy as, as Philip nice. references tatted Russian daddy Santa oh yeah 
Oof. I'm here. Yeah, I didn't see the I didn't see the movie, but yeah, definitely I was like, oh, so that's a thing. Yes, Jeff. No, I'm gay gasping. Oh. <laughs> I went. <gasps> I know. You, you, you got to see Rise of the it's, it's a really good good movie, animated movie. Uh, you got Hugh Jackman as uh, uh, the Easter Bunny. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Who, who, who all is the, in, in that cast? Because we have the Tooth Fairy in there. Easter Bunny. There's somebody else that I can't think of. IMDb. It's been a while since I watched it. Well, they said Jack Frost is in there. Yeah, Jack Frost is actually the protagonist. Oh, okay. He he's our focus because he essentially turns into an additional guardian, the new guardian, a new guardian, mm-hmm. I should say. Um, is that a spoiler, Jeff? Um, not really. Okay. Is is a what a what? Uh, let's see. Oh, we have. Oh, Alec Baldwin's the one who who does the voice of Santa too. Jude Law does pitch. I can't remember what pitch pitch does. Uh, but they have the Sandman, Sandman, Santa, Tooth Fairy, and Easter Bunny, and then Jack Frost. It's really good. So it's like you have something to watch now, and I really do. I really, really do. Yeah, pitch, pitch must be same man. So. But you have Chris Pine as as Jack Frost, Alec Baldwin as Santa Claus, uh, Jude Law, Isla Fisher does the Tooth Fairy, Hugh Jackman does the Easter Bunny, or just Bunny. His reference says, "It's it's really cool. You should check it out." All right, so I added a couple more new links <laughs> to the everything. Right well, because like I've just been looking through, and some of this stuff is like really speaking to what uh, Ed was talking about here. Um, Especially this last one with the bent over the knee thing. Although, I mean, it's obviously posed and meant to be like kind of theatrically silly. That's that's where I was getting confused. Uh, Pitch is the boogeyman. Oh, okay. So, so uh, Jude Law plays the boogeyman. Because Sandman doesn't actually say anything. Gotcha. You're correct on that. Uh, so I'm just going to say, uh, folks, uh, uh, check the show notes for all these images and links that we, we give. Because yeah. right now all we're doing is like doing searches for Santa and such. So, Oh, Big my. Surprise. What? Uh, the last one? Uh, I think the middle one with Santa looking down. In his red jacket, and that's beautiful uh, belly, <laughs> and his hand is down in the crotch area, wondering what he's grabbing. Oh, he's definitely grabbing his sack. Oh yeah, that one. I had a feeling that one was going to be a, a preferred, yeah, favorite. Absolutely, but but we'll, but we'll get these in the show notes. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you, you're you're wondering what these are, time to pull up comes out loud dot com. Um, when you're if you're listening to the the podcast and checking these out, and for all you who are watching live, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Needless so in say, a... some of these are just not uh not something we put on YouTube. Sorry. Yeah. So, Ed, you also uh, gave us a link to a article um, by fatherly.com. Yeah, that was... Um, I'd not heard of before. Um, yeah, that was just mainly kind of just 
uh, interpreting some of the Pornhub data, like, as to why people think that Santa would be a sex icon, um, which is talking about kind of the, uh, like, what I've mentioned before about the fi- the physical fetishes, like the extra weight and the gray hair and the beard. And um, have either of you ever heard of Rule 34? Yep. Yeah, so, like, they talked about that, about how, um, you know, if it exists on the internet um, or if it exists in pop culture, usually there's some kind of a, there's some kind of porn for it. Mm-hmm. So it it doesn't make it, it's not a uh, too much of a stretch that people wouldn't fetishize Santa. Yeah, I mean, I, the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. Um, that it would uh, not like I, it would probably be shocking if it wasn't fetishized in some way. Um, so yeah, but I, uh, it's it's definitely something that gives you. Well, if you think about it, it gives you something to to consider and ponder. Um. There's also a reference towards the end of the article that we're seeing a rise in silver foxes and dad bods being attractive. Uh, goes on to say, throw in the power equally mixed with the kindness, and I can see where the attraction may grow. Mm-hmm. May grow? What is this may grow business? <laughs> I mean, it does grow. Is this article? 2017. Uh, yeah, it's only two years old. A survey of a thousand women in the UK found that about a third of the women find the notion of a Santa to be sexy, quote unquote. Professional ball Santas have shared tales of being essentially assaulted on the job by women who can't get enough tinsel. Oh, my. (laughs) (laughs) And then it says, clearly, this fat arbiter of naughtiness just does it for some people. Right. And then uh, that kind of goes to the, the Golden Girls uh, link that I provided because I also thought about um, like, are you familiar with the the clip of Blanche bringing home the moss? Oh yeah, the Golden Girls, Blanche and Santa. Well, oh. the place to ourselves. Ooh, uh, yeah, I can't play that. But there's a YouTube link for y'all. So, of course, the Golden Girls had to get into. They're just very culturally relevant. Especially with Blanche being the the, the sexual one. (laughs) The sexually liberated one of the bunch. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm I'm watching it while we're talking. I'm like not quite recalling this. But then again, I don't have the Golden Girls memorized, so I lost gay points, I'm sure, for that. So <laughs> You lose some princess points. Well, you know. There's that. Sorry, I'm not in the, the position to, to do the whole magical thing to make him lose princess point. If, oh, if anybody I, remembers. I... <laughs> what? Oh, did did you just read Owen's comment in the chat? Uh-oh. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Santa, how could you? <laughs> or Rose admonishing Santa Claus. <laughs> what? Oh, you're watching the video? Yes, it's just so silly. <laughs> Oh, anyways. So, yeah. And then, Ed, you also included, like, lyrics to Santa Claus is Coming to Town, which, like, you didn't include all the lyrics, but you included some of them. Uh Uh-huh. And I get, I take your point. Yeah. Right? (sighs) Better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming. See you at my and James to town. He's making a list, checking it twice. Gotta find out who's naughty and nice. I mean, come on. Santa Claus is coming to town. 
Yeah. Uh huh. Well, I mean, and then we can get into like he sees you when you're sleeping. He, he knows when, when you're sleeping awake. naked. He knows when <laughs> you're awake naked. He knows if you've been bad, bad or good. Uh, so be, so be good, good for, for goodness' sake. And we got all I just, sorts of innuendos. I don't know. Like, I feel more and more the further we've delved into this in this hour that we've just built the case that it's nearly impossible to not fetish I mean, it's I mean, I've known this for a long time. But I, I think that that, like, but uh, I'm pretty sure there's a certain population that would take great umbrance with the idea of sexualizing Santa. Like, but think of the you know, children, as, like, right? As a beloved, like holiday deity slash figure or whatever you want to believe in. Um, well, think, think of your husband. I mean, if you have, if you have kids, the, the, your husband is all nice and sweet to your, to your children, the children. And in the bedroom, that's something else. <laughs> Well, what about the song I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus? I mean, really? <laughs> that's just that's just naughty. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, we I are, suppose. Are, we are uh, um, saying that uh, like fidelity is not a thing in that song. Why is it okay to kiss Santa Claus? Why can mommy kiss Santa Claus? <laughs> well, that kind of goes back to our previous show about the landscape of relationships. It really does. I mean, maybe they have a polycule going on and we just don't know about it. Oh, is I bet. You know what? I <laughs> bet that I bet that Rudolph is somehow involved in this with that fucking nose. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That was taking it to a place I wasn't prepared for. <laughs> um <sighs> So, I mean, it's a thing. It's out there. Uh, and whether or not people really um, dig it and get into it and are, you know, down with it, I think is kind of on a personal level. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely think there's a – I'm going to go on on a limb and make a – like, not a bet, but say unproven, but in my opinion, there is a significant portion of – gay male identified individuals that sexualize Santa Claus in some way. Yeah. And, and it may not be all the time. Like I think about like if they have a Santa at bar night function, do you know what I mean? Um, like a local bear group had their holiday party last night um, that I've been to in the past. And I saw that someone posted a picture and someone came as Santa Claus. And I was like, Oh, I'm quite sure people were, you know, mm -hmm, uh, looking at Santa in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Uh, at such an event. So, yeah. I well, think I, I mean I also think that like that it it is that there's like some nostalgia factor with it that like you know there's like this innocence and that it brings you back to like a a time cuz like they talk about in one of those articles that like the lap is like a safe space and it's like a happy place. Um so like come sit on my lap. So like it like it brings you back to like being a kid, which you know a lot of fantasies um, stem from. Mm. Philip brings up an interesting point in the live chat. He said everybody wants to be seen favorably by Santa. Yeah, which is that whole kind of uh, like we were talking about the dominance issue. Um, not really an issue, but you know that that perspective about um, the omnipotence and seeing things and knowing things, uh, and like I don't know if this is ever said anywhere, but I think there's a given or an understanding that you can't lie to Santa because he already knows. So mm. I think that kind of also goes, you know, with something to the whole uh, truth be lived kind of concept um you know and how that and how that's happening so you know and of course there's there's a great amount of things that can be you know taken as double entendre when it comes to santa 
So nowadays, yeah. people don't just want to sit on people's laps. Some people want their face in Santa's lap. I, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, his sack is full of presents. I mean, who doesn't want the goodies? You know, mm -hmm. it's the, the whole point is to have something give Santa give you something that you want, right? I mean, uh huh. Am I missing something here? No, no. <laughs> I mean, and We're there's on the same also, page. <laughs> well, and you know, so, uh, I mean, I, I'm sure this is, well, it's absolutely guaranteed to be in there given rule 34. Um, the, the whole thing about, you know, the fattening of Santa, um, because I remember watching the claymation, uh, that had happened and how Santa's seen and he was skinny, um, and I was all confused at first, like as a small child when I like first seen it, um, the Rankin Bass, you know, claymation version with Rudolph. And then, like, I was more delighted by the fact that you know Mrs. Claus was like, "Santa, you have to eat. Nobody likes a skinny Santa." <laughs> like, you know, very admonishingly, you know. And then she fattens him up. Now I don't know what the hell she gives him because I'm quite sure the gainer community would be greatly intrigued by that. <laughs> uh huh. Because he gets big quickly, um, you know. And then, of course, you know, the, the concept that we leave out cookies and milk or treats, um, you know, stuff for the elves and the reindeer, you know, as, like, nourishment and giving them thanks for, I mean, you know, for presents and all I mean, he has to travel that. the entire world in one night. Right. It's got to take a lot of energy, not just for, for Santa, but also for the the reindeer who have to pull that big old sleigh and the big old elf with full of a whole bunch of presents right although i'm sure he is he's got like uh that uh, 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 bag of holding this is how he carries all those presents around well that's where i think the newer movies have kind of magicked up the possibility the technology of how that would even take place anymore i mean he's a magical being so. That's true, but I think like for quite a while, like, <laughs> for traveling the world, the entire world, leaving presents, for good little boys and girls, girls all in one night. Right, exactly. Um, and given the ever expanding world population, you know, statistically that becomes more and more challenging. I imagine so. He has an hour to co cover an entire time zone. Yeah, <laughs> and move on to the next one. Yeah. So. Um, it's out there. It exists, and it's probably not going to stop at all, ever. No, there will always be some type of uh, some type of interest in it. Um, so uh, I know that Damon's not here, uh, oh. and this is not speaking out of turn because it's been discussed before on the podcast. Damon's uh, partner Jim does play Santa Claus at this time of year. Um, he's one of Santa's elves, so to speak, oh. uh, that dresses up as Santa. My father did it when I was younger. Um, not specifically for me, but for other kids, like kids of friends of the family and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, like I'm curious about like now that we're adults about the concept of role play. Like of all the things that exist, I think this is probably a specific yet seasonal kind of role play concept. But I don't know, like, and if you have any insights or, like, if, you know, in my pondering about that, because I think of like there are some definitely some hierarchical types, like, uh, and it's mostly about power. So, like, yeah. the cop, the firefighter, the doctor, um, the business executive. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like these people that sort of have power over you in certain circumstances. So we role play in some way. You know, like, how can I get out of the ticket? Um, is there anything I can do, Judge, to not be sent to prison? Um, you know, whatever the, the case may be. Um, but this is kind of the only one I can think of that maybe has a seasonality to it. I mean, and don't get me wrong. If you want to get fucked by Santa in the middle of the summer, by all means. I mean, they have... don't call it Christmas in July for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also remember, we actually interviewed a Santa. We did. In Back fact, now in... Uh, episode three, 341, uh, Good Santa call. Claus interview with Jim Stevenson, who is a bear. Um, and he was in the, the documentary uh, I Am Santa Claus as well. Yes. So, Have you seen that, Ed? I haven't. 
Oh my god, you have to watch the documentary. Oh, it's on Netflix, mm-hmm. right? Uh, should be. It was before, I believe. Okay. If not, oh, it should be on it. Amazon. Yeah. Um, it's a really good documentary. It came out a handful of years ago. Uh, we actually got Jim to come on as an interview. He is the gay Santa amongst the the half dozen, roughly, that they follow. Um, and uh, how that kind of is or is not accepted. Um, but he is a bear. He is a former Mr. TBRU. Uh, so, yeah, it's interesting. Um, have you, um, have uh, any of you ever seen, um, it was like the Santa games. It was like a reality show a couple years ago. No, <laughs> no. Um, it was really interesting because they had, uh, like these professional Santas and they were competing for like this prize. And like these men take it very seriously and like yeah. they um they all have like different like their different interpretation of santa it was it was really interesting um right. but um like when you uh, yeah i definitely will check that out but when you talk about like the idea of role play um i think of just like the uh the the power aspect and how that can be presented in different ways Mm -hmm. and i think that like um do either of you play um dungeons and dragons oh yeah yeah so like when you're looking at like the like chaotic good and like all of those i think of like power like that way like how are you going to initiate or how are you going to deliver your power and i think that santa like the 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 role of Santa would be more on like the um, morally good, mm-hmm. um, or like more like the I don't know. What do you think? Um, honestly, I think he would be neutral good. He would be neutral good. Yeah, I I okay. don't think he's at the point of lawful, which is kind of like a strict strict rules and stricture. And not quite chaotic. Because he like a, um like a police officer, right? So like when you're doing some kind of role plays, um, you know, like I think it would be important to determine who the like where the power is coming from, like what or orientation. Um, because I think that like with Santa Claus it's coming from like a different place than it would from a like say a police officer or like a judge or mm. a teacher. You know? Mm. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah, because yeah, it gives you got like the spectrums of lawful, neutral, chaotic, or you've got uh, good, neutral, evil. And he's definitely on the good side of things. Mm hmm. Uh, but I don't think he's necessarily lawful, but not chaotic. So that's where where I'm getting like a neutral good good on. It. He's like, be good, but how you define that is kind of up to you. So like the other thing that I'm thinking about when we're when we're coming into role play, like we talked about the fact that like it brings back aspects of like nostalgia and childhood. Mm-hmm. Um, so like with the idea of. Um, just like kind of like um what am i thinking of here like (laughs) like childhood and like morality and like social control like the idea of like santa as like you know like you were like gary you were talking about the kid in the store Mm -hmm. like using santa as like a form of social control um and that like the role like the role play aspect of that is so that you're acting you're behaving you know correctly like in lives in lines with your morals and your your beliefs yeah i mean i also would be really intrigued to talk to people who don't grow up with the concept of santa claus because i i just realized like we're very skewed i grew up mm-hmm from a family and an American culture background, like where Santa Claus was a thing 
and you know you prepared for his arrival you might have your pictures taken with him you got gifts from specifically from santa do you know what i mean like there's a whole <laughs> aspect of that so i'm wondering like what it's like for perhaps a a gay bare male individual do you know what i mean that doesn't really have that other background um I'd be very intrigued, to, like to, if they see it, like from an outside <laughs> perspective, and they feel very differently about, you know, how we, how we view the whole thing, or if, it, or if they also are just as, you know. Well, I mean, I, um, my head is like automatically going to like, um, like people who grow up like Jewish. Okay. Um. There's that. But, like, the other thing I'm thinking is that in a lot of cultures, there is some kind of, like, Santa-like figure. Like, if, you know, like, if you were, um, uh, like, if you grew up, like, in Italy or, like, Italian, you have, like, La Bufana or, um, uh, like, there's, who's the, the, like, German one? It's like the the goat or something. Oh, you're talking about Krampus. Krampus. Yeah, he's supposed uh, to be the uh, antithesis to Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, do you think that like I think it would be really interesting to see like, um, if there are other uh, like entities or belief systems around like high holy days or like really important days and like how to prepare for those. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It'd be interesting. Yeah, I don't know. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of like a lot of people who who like grow up in the Great Bear community and they discover that there's this whole culture which has this thing around this time of year which they weren't aware of for um, of, of Santa Claus, and they don't really think of it in the um, the Christian Christian takeover of a pagan holiday <laughs> mm-hmm. of um, uh, having this kind of like fetishist sort of thing. It might be attracted, even though they don't, they don't necessarily celebrate Christmas or anything like that. So, like. <sighs> People who are who are Jewish, they probably still get exposed to it because of everybody who are celebrating uh, Christmas, just because of, of wherever they're living. So it's mm-hmm. it's it's one of those things where because Santa, in all intents and purposes, is more of well, he's been around for a while, but right. he he's he's not really the true meaning of christmas um quote unquote um it doesn't necessarily revolve around santa claus at all he was just somehow incorporated into the holiday Mm. so so there there may still be some exposure that may be not necessarily dealing with the religion um to it but well i know that i know that in um like some like some people who grew up say Christian, um, a lot of or some Christian families don't want their children to associate gift giving with Santa. Okay. Because they think that like the the gifts should be like they came from Jesus. Like they're um like they're Jesus they're they they come from Jesus. So like, you know, um I've talked to like some people who say that they tell their kids not to believe, like that they are not to believe in Santa Claus. Okay. Or just kind of chisel away at that and says, yeah, Santa Claus is not real. Like instead yeah. of trying to keep that belief at least for their young, innocent days, uh, to, to knock that out of their system early. Um. Mm hmm. I'm sure there was a point. I, I don't even remember when it's the time when I, I realized that this was just a fantasy um, uh, person. Um, 
I don't know when that actually happened, but our our family always had like it's the notion of Santa Claus. So like at the point where yes, all of us kids were all like grown up, we all know that Santa's not really real. We still got presents from Santa. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh we we still took the spirit of what that was meaning. So Right. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess my feeling on it is, you know, you, like everything, it adapts and changes as you grow. Mm-hmm. So the significance of it or the relevance, um, how it impacts your life, those kind of things come into play in different ways. So, yeah, I mean, it it, it, it will alter, but I think a lot of that happens. I mean, I, I think about how some of us have talked about now that we're older, like you go back and you visit your old home that you grew up in, and you're kind of like, wow, this is so much smaller than I remember. <laughs> right? right? And yet the only physical difference is that you got bigger. Like, mm-hmm. that you grew up, you became an adult as opposed to being a child. Um, you know, the dimensions are still all the same. You know, the house did not shrink <laughs> or anything. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think that, you know, that that's kind of one of the other things that can happen for you. Um, so, yeah. But I'd be curious to know what uh, people have to say, you know, their thoughts on on Santa Claus as a, as a fantasy concept. Um, you know, whether it, it is a thing for them or not. And if they do see the like an increase, as Pornhub has greatly pointed out statistically, <laughs> uh, you know, that it goes up at this time of year in terms of uh, searches and what people were thinking about. So, yeah. Uh, also, <clears throat> last week we announced a giveaway. Oh, that's right. We did. However, to my knowledge, prior to us having the show tonight... Nobody submitted anything. So, yeah, we can't give away our Cubs Out Loud Corkscrew wine opener <laughs> if y'all don't, like, pay attention <laughs> towards the end of the show when we make that announcement. We say, hey, look, we have our own wine opener corkscrew deal that has our logo on it. You know, it's pretty. and We're going to ship it out to somebody, but... <clears throat> You have to email us. Those were the instructions. Yeah. We, we want us to screw you. Get it, Ed? You go, yeah, absolutely. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. <laughs> wow. Apparently not a fan of the dad jokes. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, so what was what was the instructions again? Are we are we going to continue it or are we just going to be like, oh, um, no one gets it? We can. Uh, the goal was like within a week, someone would send us an email and say they wanted screwed by Cubs Out Loud, and then uh, we would then select somebody at the next show and announce uh, so, who the winner is. So as soon as you, you you hear this, just open your email on your phone, <laughs> wherever wherever, and, and just. Just put that in the subject line. Just send it to cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Oh, one of our live listeners just said, I forgot about that. Yeah, well, oh. I didn't because it was sitting in, in the little box on my desk here. And I saw it today and I was like, oh, that's right. We have to pick that. And then I never <laughs> saw that that I was like, oh. But then again, it was towards the end of the show. So at that point, we were kind of wrapping up and getting into our uh, closing remarks like we are now. So. So, tell us about your Santa fantasy, because, you know what, I hate to say it, but that's the end. Mm. Uh, if you want to be screwed by Cubs Out Loud, you can choose an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Uh, you can also uh, leave comments about your Santa fantasies at cubsoutloud.com and leave a comment on the blog. You can leave us some voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 talk that's 361 265 you can find us on various social media outlets at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and, of course, on YouTube. Uh, you can join the Entourage chat uh, where you can sometimes see links, links to when we go live, uh, and various other naughty things um, at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. You can subscribe to our Google, Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col on your computer. And once you've got it subscribed to your Google Calendar, you can pull it up on your phone. 
you can also get various merchandise such as the corkscrew and various other accoutrements at zazzle.com slash cubs out loud you can become a patron we appreciate your patrons patrons we are working on some other things that we need to do uh, for that soon soon at patreon.com slash cubs out loud if it weren't for you i wouldn't have a new monitor and computer and everything so i appreciate that very much i had old old old, old stuff so uh I'm glad glad to get an upgrade um and you could subscribe or rate us on apple podcast subscribe to us to google play podcast and spotify you can find me anywhere on the internet it says box tech box copy box cub box something or other if you would like to get in touch with me online, you can pretty much find me anywhere as GareBear73. My Twitter uh, is G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3. You would add three X's at the end of that if you want the naughty stuff. And Mr. Edward, where would they get in touch with you if they wanted to find you online? So I am as a unit, um, no, little L-I-L-C-U-B-B-I-E on most um apps um however on twitter you can find me at uh, eddie h cook um or for my naughty twitter you can get me at jeep daddy and then on instagram you can find me as unicub underscore sex brain wizard that's for instagram hey. and uh that's a uh, oh i need to do a thing don't i hey this this, this, and I can then say, say good night, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Have a good night, y'all. Some echo. Oh, we're getting some echo. Therapy, yeah. That's good. Okay. Well, Ed, thank you for coming on and joining us uh, and filling in for today so that we could have a lovely discussion about Santa Claus. That was a lot of fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it and you got some rest from your trip yes um and now i get to do some laundry and then go to bed yay okay. you have yay. a, a day to... full of things ready for you tomorrow mm-hmm. yes okay. oh i just got a new twitter follower oh uh, you're probably gonna have another one so. interesting oh, hmm Cool. Possibly somebody who was just listening to the show. I know, right? Or Very timely. Where is it again? Ah. Hmm. Um, Ed, have you given? Uh, hold on. <laughs> Jeff, I think we're done for recording. Okay, hold on. Okay, I need to do one more thing for about 20 seconds. That's fine. I just realized I was going to say something like it doesn't need to be on air. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I don't have to do a thing. So. These things are just wonky from what they were like back in the day. I have to monitor the thing because of the lag up to YouTube. I know. This whole live production stuff, it's exciting. Yeah, so we got about 20 seconds, so bear with me. That's okay. Bear with me. Ha 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 ha. ha.
Uh, <laughs> pun. <laughs> Boo. Horrible pun. Oh, once I find that photo, I'm definitely going to uh, send it to the both of you. Okay. Um, it's it's really hot. I tried doing a quick search online, but I nothing was coming up to match to what you had described. So I was like, I yeah. don't know what it is. I don't even know where I found it. Um, hmm. But somebody, I feel like somebody sent it to me. Okay. Yeah. Stop streaming now.